Welcome back. Let's begin with chapter five, A Perilous Journey. It's unlikely you would have looked through the junk shop window at six o'clock that morning, but if you had, you might have seen a crew of tiny pirates on the edge of a shelf getting themselves ready for adventure. They were armed with every weapon they could lay their hands on, safety pins, sewing needles, cocktail sticks, and a jumble of other odds and ends inside their bags. Button had raised the flag as high as it would go. "'No one messes with this scurvy crew,' he cried. "'We may be tiny, but we're still fearsome. "'Pocket pirates to the rescue!' "'In the corner of the shelf lay a tiny musical box with a wind-up handle. "'A long length of cotton was wound around the musical barrel "'so that when the handle turned and the music played, the cotton lowered to the ground. "'The pirates called it the elevator. "'They took it in turns. Kept him first, of course.' Then Uncle Noggin, then Lily, and when the others were at the bottom, Button took one last look along the shelf, wound the handle once more, and held tightly on to the end of the thread. He listened to the music play as he was lowered down to the next level. From here it was a climb. Books were stacked in wonky piles, like giant uneven steps, and though it was dusty and they had to help Uncle Noggin over all the thick encyclopedias and heavy car manuals, they soon reached the crockery box. They tried to be quiet, but the plates clattered noisily. Shh, whispered Button. You'll wake Doyle. Too late, Lily said with a gasp. The sly eyes of the dog had blinked open. They could hear him heave himself out of his basket and head in their direction, brushing his tail against the boxes and shelves, sniffing the air. Crew, hold still, the captain ordered. That thing will have us for breakfast. Doyle was moving closer. "'At least it means the mice will stay out of the way,' said Lily. "'True,' said Button. "'But I don't like your chances against those teeth.' He looked over to the broken plug socket. It was only inches away. If they moved quickly enough, they could squeeze through into the gap in the middle of the wall to safety. Button whispered his plan to the others. Captain Crabsticks and Uncle Noggin would go first. Then Lily and Button himself would bring up the rear. If they all went together, Doyle would be more likely to notice them. "'Marvellous plan, young Button,' the captain said, clapping him on the back. tally ho And off he went, with Noggin in tow, the old pirate waddling as fast as his little legs would take him. But even with Captain Crabstick's help, Uncle Noggin was still painfully slow. Button gritted his teeth. The captain had gone through the hole in the wall first, so that he could help Uncle Noggin from inside. But Uncle Noggin's plump belly was caught fast on the opening. The plaster crumpled around him. Then suddenly Uncle Noggin was through. He took a chunk of plaster with him and made the hole bigger. Lily darted after them and leaped gracefully into the hole. She turned and held her hands out to Button, but it was too late. Doyle had spotted him. Mornings were a bad time to come across the hairy beast. He was always hungry when he woke. Button knew there was no time to think. He had to run for it. Now! He could feel the dog's hot breath at his back as he sprinted towards the hole and threw himself through. He looked over his shoulder and saw a large black nose nudging at the opening. He'd just made it. After all the excitement, the pirates needed a rest. A slice of early, early morning light poured into the gap in the wall, and they could just about see to unpack their pocket-sized picnic. They perched on chunks of plaster, using their bags as cushions. Uncle Noggin took off his neck scarf and laid it out to make a picnic blanket. Once I got stuck in a teapot began old Uncle Noggin as he handed out their breakfast of biscuit crumbs. What's right in the spout I was. I was thinner than mind you. Wouldn't even get halfway down nowadays. Not with this. He pouted his round belly. How did you get stuck in the first place, said Button, who found who had found a comfortable spot and was ready for a story as he ate his breakfast. Well, it started like this, said Uncle Noggin. I was out one night heading toward a corner of a sandwich I'd spotted through the spy glass earlier in the day. Couldn't quite see from the ship, but I was fairly sure there was a piece of chicken in there. Maybe even a dollop of mayonnaise, if I was lucky. Anyway, off I went into the night when... Suddenly, a scratchy noise came from the darkness. It grew louder and louder. It sounded like legs marching toward them. Not just one pair of legs. Lots and lots of legs. More legs than you can even imagine. "'What's that?' cried Lily and Button at the same time. Their hearts were beating fast and their eyes were open wide. "'Oh, no,' groaned Uncle Noggin. "'Not again!' 
Wood lice, Captain Crabsticks roared. Abandon breakfast! But before anybody could move, the wood lice were upon them, scrambling and fiddling and scratching, around their feet, up onto their knees, snatching the brisket crumbs. Hundreds of them, thousands of little feelers, tickled the pirate's arms and legs. Lily gave a muffled yell. Grr off my breakfast! Run for it! shouted old Uncle Noggin, and they all headed into the darkness. Chapter 6 A Place Called Fridge The pocket pirates kept moving until the click-click-clicking of woodlice legs had stopped. They could see a chink of light, light up ahead. Button approached first. He climbed through the hole and found himself looking out into the kitchen, and right there in front of him was the huge white door that led to the place called Fridge. Button looked up at the clock in the kitchen. It was nearly lunchtime. There is one way to get through a fridge door when you're two inches high, and that's to wait until a monster-sized shopkeeper opens it. But the pirates couldn't hang around forever. They needed to rescue Jones as quickly as they possibly could. Perhaps a story will help pass the time, said old Uncle Noggin, poking his head through the hole behind Button. Did I ever tell you about the time when I was almost cooked alive in the microwave oven? It was at Monday morning, and we hadn't eaten for three whole days. Er, perhaps not now, said Button, wishing Uncle Noggin would concentrate. Just then the dog bounded into the kitchen. He came racing toward them. We've been seen, Button squeaked and scrambled back through the gap in the wall. No, we haven't, said Lily calmly. Look. They stuck their heads out of the gap again and watched as Doyle skidded to a halt at the big white door. He rubbed his face against Fridge and barked excitedly, calling Mr. Tui to come and feed him. He's hungry, whispered Lily as they crouched inside the cracked wood of the baseboard. What splendid luck, said Captain Crabsticks. This is our chance. We need to seize the moment while Doyle is distracted, said Button. Suddenly everything went dark. Something was blocking the hole. Button reached out a hand. It felt like paper. Mr. Tui, Lily said. They could hear the owner of the junk shop grumbling in the kitchen. He was complaining about how Doyle was always hungry and how food was always disappearing from the shelves in the middle of the night. Button thought quickly. He tore a hole in the paper and climbed through. Where's Button gone? said Uncle Noggin in surprise. It's all right. It's his grocery shopping, came Button's muffled voice. He was having a good look around inside Mr. Tui's shopping bag. There was a tub of margarine, a stack of canned dog food, a box of tea bags, a pint of milk, and a loaf of bread. Huh. Him and his horrible granary bread came a voice from behind Button. Why does he keep buying that stuff? The bits get stuck in my teeth. Lily had climbed through the hole and into the bag, too. Quick, Lily, help me lift this margarine lid, Button said. What? We're not going in there. Are we? Lily asked. Hurry, Button said. We've only got seconds. The two pirates grabbed the lip of the lid and pushed upward with all their might. It popped open and the smell of sunflower oil came wafting out. Button clambered through the gap between the lid and the tub and plopped himself into the creamy mush. Lily pulled herself up and followed Button in. Ugh, it's all slimy, she complained as she pulled the lid back down on top of him. Get a move on, Button shouted to Uncle Noggin and Captain Crabsticks too late. The bag was lifted into the air. Button and Lily heard a metallic clank as a can of dog food was taken out and opened, and then they felt the margarine tin being taken out of the bag. All at once, everything went very, very cold. Button felt a shiver go down his spine. From the gap in the wall, the captain was looking on in horror. Uncle Noggin had gone silent. Poor Lily and Button, said the captain, lost and alone in fridge. They'll be terrified without us. What now, my dear fellow? We need a plan, Noggin replied thoughtfully. And I think I've got one, the captain exclaimed, slapping his thigh. He pointed up at the table to where the open can of dog food was sitting. No. Really? Noggin said. It's our only chance. I was hoping for something more tasty. Me too, the captain shrugged, but to be perfectly honest, I haven't tried dog food. You never know. And so they clambered through the gap in the wall and began to climb, the notches and grains in the chair leg as fast as they could. Uncle Noggin puffed and panted and tried not to look down. They had to be quick. And that ends chapter six, so going to take a small break 
and join me next time for chapters 7 and 8.